Hi, it's Katrina. My friend David is going to be helping me out with the voiceover today, so I hope you enjoy. Number 10. Bloody Mary Mary Tudor was the first Queen of England to rule by herself. She's also called Mary the First of England, or more appropriately, Bloody Mary. Mary earned herself the ghoulish nickname by persecuting Protestant heretics, killing people in the hundreds. Historians have estimated that during her brief five years ruling England, between July of 1553 and November of 1558, she killed 300 people. She didn't just kill them, she had them burned alive at the stake in one of the most brutal executions of the Middle Ages. She went even further than her father, Henry VIII. You remember him, right? With all the wives and the beheadings? But even though he is famous for having his second wife, Anne Boleyn, sentenced to death, he only ever executed 81 one people for heresy. But what did it mean in 16th century England to be a heretic? For Mary, it meant being a Protestant. Her father had reversed the religious doctrine of England during his rule, leading to the rise of Protestants and the abolition of Catholicism. But when Mary took over, she immediately reversed it, and in 1555, she revived ancient heresy laws so that she could legally burn people. Hundreds of practicing Protestants fled to Germany and Geneva, where they would later become the Puritans. Those who were caught not being Catholics, and those who refused to give up their Protestant way and become Catholics were martyred in fire. Bloody Mary will be remembered forever thanks to that paranormal game. Bloody Mary is said to have a high risk level, but if you are successful, you will have demonstrated proof of your bravery. There is some controversy as to which Mary it is. It could be Bloody Mary or another Mary named Mary Worth. Regardless, if you light a candle and chant Bloody Mary into a mirror, supposedly you see her ghost. Have you ever played this game? What was your experience? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 9. Elizabeth Bathory Elizabeth Bathory wasn't a queen, but she was a very wealthy and powerful Hungarian noblewoman in the 17th century. She was extremely well-connected. Her uncle was the King of Poland, and her nephew was the Prince of Transylvania. But that didn't stop her from being persecuted as a serial killer in the year 1610. She was confined to her home at Castle Chaktitse up until her death in 1614. This was after it came out that she murdered roughly 600 people. She's currently the Guinness World Record holder for most victims as a female murderer. She earned herself the nickname Blood Countess, and some say she was one of the inspirations for the story of Dracula. So what exactly did Elizabeth Bathory do to her 600 victims? It all started after she became a widow in 1604. Her husband died and she was left alone. She began to torture her servants and the minor noblewoman within her reach. She occasionally covered somebody with honey and left them outside to be eaten by insects. She forced young women to strip naked and jump into ice baths until they froze to death. She would drive needles into people's fingernails, cut their noses and lips off, and bite people viciously like a wild animal. The only thing Elizabeth was not guilty of was the one crime she's most famous for. Legend has it she used to bathe in the blood of virgins, splashing about in a bathtub filled to the brim with warm human essence. But that never happened, or at least there's no record of it happening. Number 8. Anula of Anuradhapura Anula was the great queen of Anuradhapura in the first century BC. Historical records from this time are a little fuzzy, but she's believed to have been the first female head of state anywhere in Asia. She was the first recorded queen of Sri Lanka to wield significant power, and she was supposedly a man-eating serial killer. The kingdom of Anuradhapura ruled the island of Sri Lanka from between the 4th century BC until the 10th century AD, with their heads ruling from the capital of Anuradhapura. The city was occupied as early as 900 BC, when it was a little more than a settlement of shacks. But with time, the civilization grew and prospered and became powerful. Queen Anula ascended to the throne after allegedly poisoning King Choranaga. She was his consort, but had fallen in love with a palace guard. After the king was dead, he was succeeded by his son, Kudatissa. But three years later, Kudatissa also died from poisoning. Following his death, the palace guard Anula had fallen 
fallen in love with, was put into power, but he too was murdered after only a year after Anula fell in love with someone else. This happened a total of six times. Anula continued falling in love with men, helping them secure the throne, and then murdering them once she fell in love with somebody else. By the time she had run out of men to kill, it was Anula who finally found herself sitting on the throne. But her rule only lasted four months before she was usurped and burned alive in the palace. Very short rule for all of that work. Have you ever heard of this queen? Let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for more videos like these. Number 7. Caterina de' Medici You've probably heard of the notorious Caterina de' Medici. Caterina de' Medici was born in Florence in the year 1519. Her father was one of the most powerful men in the world, Lorenzo de' Medici, who had Florence in the palm of his hand. Her mother was a wealthy French woman who'd been married off as part of a negotiation between the throne of France and the Vatican. Caterina's life started out poorly. Both her parents died within weeks of her being born, and she was raised by relatives. She moved to France at 14, was married to Henry II, and in 1547, Henry was made king and Caterina was his queen consort. She and Henry had ten children, six of which survived. In 1559, Henry was killed in a jousting tournament. It was the beginning of the end for the once popular sport of jousting. His son, Francois II, was old enough to rule but was extremely sick. He died a year later, and then Charles IX became king, but he was too young to rule, and so Caterina was appointed regent. She wasn't technically the queen, but she did technically make all the decisions and the policies. And this brings us to the horrors of the St. Bartholomew Day Massacre. The issue of the time was that the Protestant Reformation had started. Protestants were demanding rights, the Catholics refused, and the French wars of religion were about to get very ugly. A crisis point was reached in 1572. On August 23rd, a group of Protestants gathered in Paris, which was considered a Catholic city. Caterina gave the order to kill every Protestant leader. News spread through Paris, people were roused to action, and mob violence exploded. Catholics took it upon themselves to start killing all the Protestants they could find. They broke into their homes, slaughtered them in their beds, and killed them in the streets. By the end of the day, Caterina had inadvertently caused the deaths of 3,000 Protestants in Paris, and by the end of the next few weeks, 70,000 in all France. Number 6. Empress Wu Empress Wu killed her sister, she killed her older brothers, and she poisoned her own mother. But her ruthlessness paid off. She lived in the 7th century AD and became the first woman in 3,000 years of Chinese history to rule by herself. The Empress started from humble beginnings as a woman named Wu Zexian. First she was a consort to Gaz Yong Emperor, then she was the woman pulling the strings behind her youngest son who took over for his father. Then from between 690 and 705, she was the official monarch. Although she only officially ruled for 15 years, Empress Wu was the one ruling over the Zhu dynasty behind its figureheads for the better part of a century. Unfortunately, the exact details of her life are obscured by the bias reporting of the day. Most people were not happy to have a female emperor, and so a lot of what they wrote in historical records may have been embellished. For example, she was supposedly cruel and lewd, she destroyed her officials, murdered anyone who got in her way, butchered her entire family, and was hated by the gods themselves. Surely there's at least some truth to the allegations put against her. Historian Mary Anderson describes some of the crimes of Empress Wu in her collection of imperial Chinese histories. The Empress supposedly had twelve branches of an opposing clan killed, had the heads of two rebellious princesses brought to her on platters, and ordered the deaths of her own grandson and granddaughter when they criticized her rule. Number 5. Hurem Sultan Hurem Sultan, also known as Roxelan, is one of the most controversial figures in Ottoman history. She was born in western Ukraine either in 1500 or 1502, during the rule of the Kingdom of Poland. She was taken at the age of 12 and sent to Istanbul as a prisoner. She became one of many concubines for Suleiman the Magnificent. But because of her unbelievable beauty and terrific smile, the Sultan fell in love with her. He agreed to free her from her bondage, and for the first time in history an Ottoman Sultan married one of his former slaves. From this point on, she became extremely influential. She was so loved by the Sultan that everything she said became law. She eventually achieved massive power and influenced all the politics of the Ottoman Empire. 
She acted as the advisor, wrote diplomatic letters, and died after a long life in 1558. However, she wasn't totally innocent. The Sultan already had children with other women who were older and technically more legitimate for the throne. This did not sit well with Hurem, who wanted her own children to become rulers when she was gone. To facilitate this, rumor has it she cooked up a plot to make the Sultan believe his sons were planning to murder him and take the throne. She then encouraged the Sultan to execute his own eldest son, securing Hurem's son's future. Number 4. Pharaoh Nitocris Nitocris was likely a pharaoh at the end of the 6th dynasty, however she may have also been a fictitious person made up by the Greek historian Herodotus. Nobody is entirely sure. The issue is that we don't have a lot of historical records about this woman. The few records we do have come from Herodotus, who was notorious for stretching the truth. The pharaoh allegedly gained power after her brother was murdered. The same people who killed her brother put Nitocris in power. She was silently furious, but accepted the throne with smiles and grace. Then she did something crazy. Right after she became queen, she invited all of the conspirators behind her brother's killing to a party. The party was held in an underground chamber. After her guests arrived, the pharaoh excused herself, locked the entrance behind her, and then flooded the room using a secret duct connected to the Nile River. Every single person involved with her brother's murder was drowned. Afterward, she threw herself on a fire to avoid any kind of punishment or retribution. Number 3. Isabella of Castile Isabella of Castile was Queen of Castile and Aragon, ruling alongside her husband Ferdinand II of Aragon. Their marriage was extremely important in the 15th century because it joined the two kingdoms under one rule, a major turning point for the Iberian Peninsula. Isabella and Ferdinand shared power equally, strengthened the monarchy, and dismantled the power that their nobles had been flaunting throughout their individual kingdoms. They were a frighteningly powerful couple who pushed the Muslims back into Africa, claimed a territory that had been lost during the Islamic attacks of the past 700 years and completed reconquering Spain. They were really the foundation for what would become the Spain we know today. On the other side, some say Queen Isabella committed genocide. It's because in March of 1492, the 31st to be exact, Isabella signed the Alhambra Decree. This proclaimed that all Jewish people living in Spain after July 31st, 1492 would be killed. Isabella was also behind the establishment of the Inquisition in Spain and behind a move to convert all Jews or anyone showing interest in Jewish life. Historian Karen Armstrong says that during the first 12 years of Isabella's Inquisition, about 13,000 Jewish people were murdered. And sadly, this was a dark shadow of what was to come in the 20th century. Number 2. Queen Maeve Queen Maeve from Irish legend may or may not have been a real person or based on a real person. She was a prominent figure in the Ulster cycle of Irish myth, Queen of Connacht and wife of Alil MacMarta. Irish myth is fascinating in that many of the characters are not necessarily superhuman or supernatural, leaving scholars to speculate they may have been real rulers. What we know about Queen Maeve is that she was a ruthless warrior. She drowned her sister when she was pregnant out of furious jealousy, and she started a war when she learned that her husband had more stuff than her. Maeve wanted to be equal with her husband, and so the story goes that they compared their belongings. They were equal in every regard except that her husband had a fabulous white bull, and she did not. When Queen Maeve went searching for a bull that could rival her husband's, she found one owned by a local farmer. Maeve demanded that the farmer hand over the bull. When he refused, one thing led to another, and war broke out between the tribes of Ireland, all over a measly bull. Number 1. Ranavalona I Ranavalona I was married to Radama I in the early 19th century, but after her husband died, she saw it as an opportunity to take power herself. She would have been ousted from power if not for her quick actions. She immediately murdered every person with political sway that could have threatened her. She got rid of the competition and made sure there was no one who could stand up against her. And so in 1828, she was the singular ruler of the kingdom of Madagascar. But she wasn't a very good queen. She wanted Madagascar to be isolated from the rest of the world, specifically from Europe. She saw what was going on in other places in Africa and didn't want anything to do with it. She crashed Madagascar's economy by cutting ties with Europe. 
And although she did repel the French when they attacked, she was brutal to her own people. She didn't like the rising Christian movement in her country, and so she squashed it with violence and brutality. Queen Ranavalona was the absolute worst thing that ever happened to Madagascar. She forced her own people into unpaid labor to complete public work projects. She had a standing army whom she sent to murder and kill at will. Her crazy policies led to the deaths of about 2.5 million people from between 1833 and 1839. She wanted Madagascar to flourish, but her isolationism led to famine, widespread starvation, violence, chaos, and the population being cut in half before she finally died in 1861. Who is your favorite wicked queen from history? Let me know in the comments, and thanks a lot for watching. Remember to hit subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you again soon.